Uh, hello, hello, hello. Yeah, how you doing? What's up everybody, here to do another tour. We're gonna do a tour today of a story if you didn't pick up from that sign. We're here next to some street art, you know, you gotta do the old street art shot. It's almost obligatory, right? Well, we're starting out, so don't worry. We got a lot of cool stuff we're gonna show you. And today we're in Astoria, Queens. Pretty awesome. Anyways, before we start guys, well, Eric, how are you? I'm doing good. Good, I believe you, I believe you, I trust you. All right, guys, I want you guys to do me a favor. If you like the video, if you've seen any other of these videos, check out the Patreon. That's a huge, uh, huge help. Uh, that's how we fund these things. Extras on there, mostly PG, okay? Also, to like the video, subscribe. If you've seen these videos before, you know what I'm talking about. Anywho, gotta get started. We got a lot to cover today, baby. Your story has got tons of history, tons of cool history, uh, tons of immigration history, flavor. It's an amazing place. Eric, should we just go ahead and start this thing? Yeah, let's get out of here. Let's do it. taking in this great view of the East River. It's always fun to come here to Hallett's Cove Beach and play the old game of uh, how much would you pay me to drink this water right now? I think I'd start bidding at uh, $40,000 and some health insurance, and then maybe I'd consider it. But uh, anyways, we're at Hallett's Cove Beach. Uh, the actual beach and kayak place is over there where you'd let your kayaks down, but we can't go over there right now because there's a bunch of young kids with their you know, meditation, baptism, yoga that they're doing over there. So we're over here with all the uh, trash and birds <laughs> where I belong. But I'm here to talk about the founding of, uh, of, of uh, Astoria, which is, uh, you know, which was started with the Hallett family. Huh? So this guy named William Hallett came over from England in 1648. He settled in uh, Connecticut and then he moved here in 1652 with 160 acres. Uh, pretty cool. And he named it Hallett's Cove. Uh, by, by, uh, by 1664, well, by the way, in 1655, his whole um, plantation, which was basically a big farm at the time, was burned by Indians, Native Americans, yep. And, uh, you know, in their defense, they were probably a little ornery from uh, being genocided, that whole thing. But, uh, yeah, he left to go to Flushing at the time when his, when his farm got burned. Then he came back in 1664. He actually expanded his holdings to 2,200 acres. This whole area of, of story was his. Pretty crazy. And then, uh, you know, it stayed within his family for a few generations. In 1708, however, William the Hallett III, not a very original uh, name that they kept handing down, you know, but, uh, you know, makes it easy to name your kid the same thing for three generations. Anyways, William the Hallett III, crazy story. In 1708, in the middle of the night, two of his escaped slaves, uh, a husband and wife, actually uh, snuck into the house and murdered him, his wife, and his five kids. Kind of crazy. Uh, in their defense, they were probably a little ornery from uh, just, you know, the whole being enslaved thing. Uh, but they were punished uh, severely, actually. In fact, the man was, was put on top of a sharpened iron and then put up in a gibbet, which if you don't know what a gibbet is, it's like this cage thing that's like wrapped around your body and you're just kind of like displayed. Uh, and he was just kind of out in the sun, just kind of hanging out. Uh, and the woman obviously was burned at the stake, as you do. Uh, but yeah, pretty messed up. That would have made for a very different Astoria tour, <laughs> you know. If you're like, uh, over here is uh, where, you know, where you can buy a really good feta cheese, and then uh, up there, bleeding all over you, is uh, a guy who killed someone. But actually, that was the first capital crime in the history of Queens County. First recorded capital crime in the history of Queens County. Pretty interesting. So it stayed within the Hallett family early on. They named it Hallett's Cove until it was renamed by a man who took over in the 1800s and developed the area, who we'll talk about right now. So now I'm here at 12th Street uh, in front of the Dr. Bailey's house. Uh, this house was actually built in 1832. A lot of the houses on this street were built in the mid 1800s. So I'm here to tell you though about this guy named Stephen Halsey. He's the next figure in our story. So he would pass by this area known back then as Hallett's Cove when he was taking the ferry from his area in Flushing down to Manhattan. And he saw this place and he's like, whoa, it's pretty sparsely populated. I should invest money in it. So he did. He bought this area that was considered Hallett's Cove and he started to lay out the streets. He, he laid out Astoria Boulevard. He put in some infrastructure. He's like, this is going to be a great investment. This is 1839, by the way. Around that time, he's looking for money 
to invest in this new neighborhood. So he approaches one of his uh, connections because he's in the fur trading business, which I guess back then was like the, you know, tech, tech bros. So he calls one of his tech bros on his Bluetooth. He, he calls John Jacob Astor while he's drinking a Starbucks coffee. He's like, hey, Johnny Jake, I got this deal for you. Can you invest some money in this new neighborhood? And Johnny Jake is like, uh, yeah, I don't know. By the way, John Jacob Astor was one of the richest people in the world at the time. His, his fortune was valued uh, at one point at $20 million, which is uh, what I guess Elon Musk spends today on his hair plugs. But back then it was a lot of money. So he approaches John Jacob Astor to invest in his new place. And John Jacob Astor is like, eh, I don't know. He says, well, maybe this will sweeten the pot. He names it Astoria. Oh, he renames it Astoria after John Jacob Astor. Look at that. So John Jacob Astor uh, says, all right, and he invests like a fraction of what uh, Halsey was asking for, which was 500 bucks. Yeah, uh, he was asking for like two grand, but he only gives him 500 bucks, but it's still named Astoria, and John Jacob Astor never came here. But in the mid-1800s, it did become, start to become this place where people had their little homes. Huh? They'd have their homes outside of, of dirty old Manhattan, and they'd come here in summer. When, so when you ask someone, hey, where do you summer? They would say, Astoria. And people would be like, ooh. Takes a little more than saying you summer in a story to impress people today, but back then it was pretty cool. And you have houses like this still around. Kind of neat. Anyways, pretty cool story, right, Eric? Yes. Should we, should we keep moving? Maybe we should get out of this road. I think uh, people found our spot. I think people are all just trying to get in the video. They're just driving their video, their cars by and that blaring. That guy's gone by three or four times. Yeah, he's just blaring his, his uh, mixtape, uh, trying to get exposure to my millions of adoring fans. <sighs> all right. Anyways, uh, let's keep moving, huh? All right, so now I'm on Steinway Street, which is one of the main drags here in Astoria, and it's named after the Steinway family. Now, industry started coming to Astoria in the end of the 1800s because of all the space, etc. And one of the big industries that come here was the Steinway Piano Factory. Ah, so this guy named Heinrich Steinweg came from Germany with a big German immigrant wave in the mid 1800s. Talked about that in countless videos. Uh, but he came along and he started his little piano factory. He actually was building them himself for, for himself, like in his house. And his 483rd piano that he made was made for the company. He started it in a loft in Manhattan uh, on Barrick Street in 1853. In 1870, he buys about 400 acres here in uh, Astoria, right? And he builds housing and creates Steinway Village for all of his workers. That'd be like if Google, you know, created Google Town for its employees, except Steinway actually makes beautiful products like pianos, which are timeless uh, and different from, you know, a tech company. Uh, hey, Tom, that... you know, uh, Google owns YouTube, right? Who am I kidding? I mean, who am I to judge? Google's a great product too. It's, you know, YouTube's a great product. Uh, please don't drop us in the algorithm, for the love of God. Uh, anyways, Steinway Village, there's houses, there's factories, there's, uh, you know, post office, there's firehouse. It's all for the employees. And part of the reason he did it was to get his employees away from Manhattan and away from all the anarchists and labor movements. Very sneaky, Steinway. Uh, in fact, there's a Steinway mansion up in the north near today's uh, piano factory, which is still there. Uh, it's the Steinway mansion. It was actually built by the Pike family in the 1850s. It was bought in 1870 by Steinway. Uh, it's up, up there still, and that's now surrounded by warehouses. It's like this beautiful house, an Italianate villa surrounded by warehouses. It's kind of funny. Interestingly enough, he also built a uh, theme park for his employees called North Beach uh, up on the north end uh, near Bowery Bay. Uh, and uh, over time, actually during Prohibition, it kind of fell into disrepair. Then it was made into an airfield, and it is today, it's LaGuardia's airport. LaGuardia Airport. LaGuardia International Airport. That's a lesson to be had. It's named after Fiorella LaGuardia. So uh, if you ever become the best mayor of New York City, you'll get the honor of having the worst airport named after you. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, this is all Steinway. One of the many, uh, there's also here on Steinway Street was where the Hellman's Mayonnaise Factory, one of the earliest incarnations of that was located. So different uh, industries moved out here because of all the space. It was cheaper, uh, et cetera. We, and, and you know, we've talked about this in other neighborhoods as well. Neighborhoods like Williamsburg, et cetera. You can check that one out. I just did that video. <laughs> you know? uh, but yeah, industry kind of came here. End of the 1800s, early 1900s. Started to grow slowly. Uh, I don't know, Eric. That's kind of pretty much it. You can see the Steinway subway station here. But, 
Yeah, really beautiful fixture. Thought we would, we would uh, frame the shot nicely with a si subway behind it. Uh, but uh, yeah, what do you think, Eric? Should we keep moving? Yeah, let's go. Let's go, baby. So I'm now in Astoria Park. Uh, this park was actually opened in 1913. I'm here to talk to you guys about how Queens, and specifically Astoria, started to grow in the early 1900s. Now, everyone knows Brooklyn was its own city by the mid-1800s. It grew and grew, and obviously with the Brooklyn Bridge and everything, it just exploded, but Queens took a little longer. Now, here in uh, Queens, they got the Queensboro Bridge in 1909, designed by Gustav Lindenthal, very beautiful bridge, but that was the first connection to quote, New York City, which at the time was Manhattan because they had all consolidated in 1898, creating the five boroughs. And Queens was a county, unlike Brooklyn, which was actually a city before it consolidated uh, into greater New York. So with the construction of the uh, uh, Queensboro Bridge, more people started to come over to Queens, including into Astoria. Then a couple of other things. The IRT, the subway, also reached uh, Astoria in 1917. This park was built in 1913 to kind of cater to the community which had grown around here. Uh, in fact, you have the pool right here, which didn't uh, open until 1936, was actually opened with WPA money uh, during the Great Depression. Uh, that's a lot of smiling to be talking about the Great Depression, but uh, you know what I mean. It was uh, actually cool, cool fact. Uh, the, I think it was the 1936, 52, and 64 uh, Olympic trials were held in that pool. It was a giant, gigantic pool, pretty cool there. Uh, but yeah, this is Astoria Pool. But then there are two other things coming into Astoria, which also helped it boom, and they are The, the bridges. That's the Hellgate Bridge. Yeah, that's what it's called. It's called that because of uh, Hellgate, which is this area here, uh, which is kind of like, it was, used to be really dangerous, the rocks and stuff. In fact, the General Slocum sank just around here. Uh, there's a little memorial to it. We talk about the General Slocum. We talk about that in the East Village video because it's all the Germans who used to live in the East Village. And of course, you gotta watch those videos. Come on, cross-referencing. Anyways, this was built in 1917, brought trains over, Penn and New York Central. Big deal, Gustav Lindenthal actually designed it. He's the same guy who designed the Queensboro Bridge we just talked about. Pretty cool little bridge, it's a steel arch there. You can see the little arch, that actually was the inspiration for the uh, Sydney Harbor Bridge, uh, which I actually covered in the uh, Sydney video. I did a video on Sydney, go figure. And you can watch it in the uh, things, whatever. But yeah, Hellgate Bridge, pretty ominous sounding name. You know, you're just like, uh, honey, I'm going to go down to the uh, grocery store. Uh, what's the fastest way to get down there? Oh, make sure you take the uh, Satan spawn gates of eternal damnation. Bridge. And uh, could you pick me up some Nutella? <laughs> uh, all right. Hellgate Bridge. But let's talk about this other bridge right here. And this is the other bridge. This right here is the Triborough Bridge. Three Borough Bridge, huh? Look at that. And it was actually built by a man named Robert Moses. Uh, and in fact, uh, Robert Caro, the biographer of Robert Moses, described this bridge not so much as a bridge as much as a traffic machine. This was actually one of the largest projects of the Great Depression era uh, using government money. Uh, it was actually more expensive than the Hoover Dam. Pretty big deal. Um, now, just so you guys know, this thing is, uh, was finished in 1936. Uh, and it actually is another one of the reasons why this area kind of started to populate. Now keep in mind, uh, Robert Moses is a very controversial figure. He helped build lots of parks, including the Astoria Pool, all these different things uh, around the city. But he also kind of destroyed a lot of the city to build uh, bridges and roads. He loved the cars, baby. This guy loved automobile. And guess what? The guy didn't even have a driver's license and had someone else drive him around everywhere he went. Which, go figure, the person who's the biggest proponent of roads in New York City doesn't have to drive on them, which is no shock. But it's a really cool bridge on the other side of the Hellgate Bridge, which is right here. And a uh, little fun fact, the person who sang at the, uh, uh, I guess, the christening of a bridge, I don't know, the dedicate, is that what you call it? A, a, the bris? <laughs> Sorry. That's, anyways, the person who, who sang was uh, this man named Anthony Benedetto. You may know him better as Tony Bennett, an Astoria-born... Uh, superstar. Uh, he's a guy, you know, like a crooner, you know, like, fly me to the moon and let me play amongst the stars. That's right, Eric. How you doing? Tell me what life is like on Jupiter and Mars. All right. How's everybody feeling tonight? All right. Great. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's the Tribro Bridge on the other side of the uh, Hellgate Bridge, kind of sandwiching in Astoria Park here. Pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, also, 
Uh, the, the guy who built it was named Othar Amon. Sorry, I'm butchering that name. He's the guy who actually designed the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. He's the guy who designed the, uh, the George Washington Bridge. So another very famous um, uh, bridge guy. <laughs> bridge guy. Let's talk about how all this growth and how all these new avenues into uh, Astoria helped grow and bring different types of people here. Huh, Eric? Hey, cool bridges. Cool bridges, bro. All right. So we're now in Athens Square, everybody. I wanted to talk to you guys about the immigration of uh, Queens and specifically of Astoria because that's kind of what makes this place great. So obviously there's a ton of Greeks here. We're gonna talk about that in a second, but there's also other groups. There's over 120 different nationalities represented in Astoria alone. Uh, you have uh, Brazilians, a uh, little Egypt, it's a, it's a really pretty diverse neighborhood. You have lots of Latin Americans that actually make up a huge percent of the population today as well. Uh, mi gente, los Latinos, huh? Anyways, I'm here to talk specifically about, sorry about that, Eric. Uh, I made him uncomfortable there. Uh, anyways, uh, we're here in Athens Square to talk about the Greeks because they're kind of the, the group that kind of really represents the neighborhood. There are two major waves of Greek immigration here into New York and into the United States. The first being in the early 1900s, late 1800s, and they came for the cheap labor. Uh, they actually came through Ellis Island. They came through places like that. Uh, and then you had the major wave, the one that defines it today, and that is the group that came in the 1960s. They started coming after World War II. After World War II, Greece was having a problem with the vacuum left by the Nazis uh, to fill its power uh, structure. And it was pretty much the first showdown in the Cold War between the Soviet Union and the United States, kind of fighting over what kind of group controls uh, Greece. And go figure, it's a right-wing military junta that ends up taking power in the 1960s, and that pushes lots of people over to uh, the United States. So anyways, uh, this area is now uh, the biggest, they say the biggest Greek city outside of Greece and Cyprus. Pretty kind of cool, pretty cool, huh? Pretty kind of cool. So today there's like 1.3 million Greek Americans in the United States, and they say almost 200,000 Greek Americans here in uh, New York City, which is pretty, uh, pretty incredible. Uh, kind of define this neighborhood, you have, you have St. Demetrius right nearby that was started in the early 1900s as a church, obviously, Greek Orthodox Church, Orthodox Church, but that's kind of one of the things that people don't realize. Uh, these, these groups kind of congregate in certain areas because of these kind of pillars of the community, like churches, like organizations that help kind of bring people together, help kind of uh, support each other as they're coming over to a new place where they don't speak the language. And they speak Greek, always speak Greek. That's a pretty good accent, right? Are you trolling us with all this talk of pillars and supports as you stand in front of this structure here? Oh, those things? No, not at all. Uh, real pillars of the community back here. Yeah, okay. Very on message. Yeah. Anyways, uh, the Greeks are a big part of the neighborhood today. But like I said, you have new groups coming in, like the Latin Americans, Mexican, Colombian, all these different groups that are populating it today. But that's one of the things that makes Astoria and Queens so uh, famous. Queens, by the way, I've talked about this in other videos, but Queens is the, mo the most diverse county in the entire country. And they say the world, the most linguistically diverse place in the entire world. So uh, pretty cool. You can't talk about Queens without talking about the diversity, that's for sure. Um, but yeah. It's got some cool things in the park. You have that statue of Athena was, was actually gifted to the park by, uh, by uh, Dimitris Avromopoulos. That's a pretty cool uh, name. It was Dimitris Avromopoulos gifted it to Rudy Giuliani. Yeah, so it's like, you know, there's a little contrast there. Anyways, uh, yeah, pretty cool. You have Socrates, Socrates. You got Sophocles, Sophocles. You got some cool uh, statues. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to fool the algorithm. Uh, please don't mess with us, algorithm. Please, Google. Please, YouTube. Uh, but yeah, anyways, uh, maybe I should, uh, should keep moving, huh? Yeah, let's get out of here. All right. So I'm now in front of the Museum of the Moving Image. It's a pretty cool museum you can come to here, see some movies. Eric, you've seen some movies here, right? Yeah, a lot of movies here. Yeah, which ones? Stanley Kubrick, Masterpiece Lolita. You would go see Lolita, you freak. All right, all right. <laughs> Anyways, this is the Museum of the Moving Image at Kaufman Astoria Studios. Interestingly enough, Kaufman Astoria Studios opened here in 1920 by Adolf Zukor, who actually was one of the predecessors to the company known as Paramount. I talked about this in my Upper West Side video because Paramount was named after a building in the Upper West Side. Did you know that, Eric? Pretty cool. 
anyways, uh, you know, tons of movies filmed here. You know, Carlito's Way, Goodfellas, uh, Scent of a Woman. Uh, hoo -ah! hoo -ah! You know that? You know that? You know that? Now he's getting a stamp from the channel. All right. Well, anyways, also, too, TV shows, Law and Order, uh, Judge Judy, Orange is the New Black, different. Yeah, and speaking of jail, uh, also, Cosby Show was filmed here. That's right, Bill Cosby. <laughs> but anyways, it's uh, pretty cool that it was it was actually fell into disuse. Talkie started a film here in the 1930s, but as the movie industry went out to L.A., it started to fall into disrepair. It was used during World War II and a little bit after for Army videos and things. But then it was revived in the late 70s uh, by, uh, by George Kaufman. It's actually now one of the largest landowners here in Williamsburg. And I come here also to talk to you guys about uh, what's going on around the corner. Now, of course, the story is a very nice neighborhood. Lots of people are moving here, living here. So the cost of the land is going up. The value of the land is going up, so they're trying to capitalize on it. Right around the corner for like this five block area, uh, they're trying to develop the innovation QNS development. Uh, it's been on the table now all year. It's actually one of the latest, I guess, controversies going on here and the, the whole neighborhood split. Uh, in fact, this summer, they've been having hear hearings here at uh, Kaufman Astoria Studios and all over. Uh, and the community board here just rejected the development because it would have been 12 buildings uh, ranging from 9 to 27 stories in size and the vast majority of them being uh, actual luxury apartments. 2,800 units going to be built and about t over 2,100 of them would be luxury apartments which would change the neighborhood very quickly. Uh, the more of these big developments that are luxury housing that come into a neighborhood, the quicker it changes. However, on the other side, you argue that there are jobs, construction jobs and then permanent jobs that stick around. But the neighborhood gets changed and people who can't afford here have to leave. So it's interesting how these things happen, but this is how it happened. The community board, which is made up of people in the neighborhood and are chosen by the borough president, decide and they, they then submit their opinion on what should be done. It is non-binding. And then that goes to the borough president, who then also submits their opinion. Then that goes to the city planning uh, commission, which then goes to the city council and then to get signed by the mayor. So if it passes through the city council, the mayor signs it and it's rezoned. So what would happen here is a lot of the industry and things we've talked about would be rezoned for this high density residential mixed use development and the neighborhood changes. So that's how the process kind of goes, but it all happens at the local level. You can go to these community board meetings. In fact, hundreds of people showed up and they were protesting and yelling and, and fighting and you know, doing things like, hoo -ah! not on my watch, hoo -ah! right? They probably weren't doing that. Uh, but you know what I mean, they were, they, were, you know, they were exercising their democratic rights and their democratic strengths. So uh, you know, these kind of things, the community board unfortunately is not binding. Uh, God forbid you let the people in the neighborhood actually decide what happens to it. But uh, anyways, that's pretty cool, huh? That's kind of how the, how the whole process plays out. But here in Astoria, because it's a nice neighborhood, because it's coming up, you have things like this innovation uh, you know, development coming up. There are some uh, affordable housing uh, included in it, but the argument is that it's not enough uh, when that's kind of what's needed right now in New York. Anyways, interesting. All right, let's keep moving. Well, here we are. We're at the end of our little journey through Astoria. We are here in the Socrates Sculpture Park. No. Socrates Sculpture Park. All right, relax. Anyways, really beautiful view here, East River. You got to cross the river there. Well, in the middle of the river, you have Roosevelt Island, uh, which, if you're curious about, I covered in a video. So come on, watch it. Uh, but we're here to wrap everything up. Oof, Eric, we had ourselves quite a little journey, huh? Yeah, so a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. We started out talking about the origins and the Hallett family and murder. <laughs> then we talked about Halsey and how the neighborhood got its name. Shocker, it's named after a rich dude. <laughs> okay. Then we talked about industry. We talked about Steinway family coming here and starting their own version of Google Town and uh, how they, you know, how's their you know pianos how's that that was pretty cool very musical yeah then we talked about the greeks and the immigration how cool is that all the greeks who moved here the greeks love to move to astoria see sorry about that that was my best intent at a uh greek accent uh and we talked about the modern day stuff we went to the you know the moving image museum you know we talked about also all that development going on there and all the gentrification stuff you know we talked about the bridges even you know we talked about the gates of hell bridge you know so we covered everything 
Uh, but now we got to end it. So sad. Before we leave, guys, please check out the Patreon. It's a huge help. That's what funds these things. If you watch more than one of these, just consider going and checking it out. There's extras on there. You learn some new stuff and you support. And that's how we're going to grow this thing, baby. Because Lord knows I ain't going to get any ads, you know, or endorsement deals for, you know, Starbucks or anything. That's for sure. I'll tell you that. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Uh, yeah, and also, too, like it and subscribe if you can't. Uh, check out Patreon. That's all, that always helps. So bump us in the analytics, baby. I haven't figured out the algorithm. Isn't that obvious? Uh, anyways, uh, whatever. Guys, it's over. Eric, did you enjoy yourself? Did you learn something? I did. I learned a lot today. Thank you. I hope you're not just saying that. No, I'm not. You sure? Uh, it's 75%. That's enough for me, baby. That's all I need. 75%. All right. Well, anyways, guys, that's it. I'll see you guys later. That's it. Oh. Hoo-ah! Sorry. <laughs>